You didn't give me exactly enough time to finish well, the shield. The Holy Land can't wait, Nate. There's a crusade to go on. All right. Deus Vault. Deus Vault. Deus, I can't hold why, my shield. Why aren't you wearing your mail? It's going to be too hot. Holy Land's are hot. Are you sure about that? Yes. I mean, I, I'm like, I, I haven't gotten too hot in my mail. Ooh, but it's a desert. Like, it's, it's different. It's yeah, but... heat. Really? Really? Yeah. Greetings, I'm Shat. And greetings, I am Nate. And this is actually a bit of a reply video to a recent video Matt Easton has done, which scratches a niche of mine because I've had dubious thoughts on the uh, factoid he's debunking in the video. So I want to expound on that further. And basically, I agree with him and confirm, like, give some extra points, which kind of confirms his thesis, you know, proposition here. Mm. And then discuss the uh, reason why I think knights wore surcoats. That's a lovely surcoat you're wearing. It, eh? it is. We actually have this from uh, one of the new halls, which mm -hmm. we've got a video on we that. We do have a video on that. Mm. And, of course, I'm just wearing my padded surcoat. The uh, trademark Shadowversity look. Colours and all. So there is a uh, factoid that gets repeated uh, enough, I've certainly heard it, as to why knights wore surcoats, especially or particularly on crusade in the Holy Land. And the assumption is that it helped keep the metal cool and avoid overheating. Well, I think, I think with that particular factoid, there's a few tropes that are just intertwining mm -hmm. in because Metals, like any type of metal, will get hot in the sun. And I've worn mail for a full weekend um, out training before, and it gets hot. It gets so hot, like you can't well, easily touch there's it. There's an important caveat here to mention, because there's a difference between, say, 30 degree sun, and Matt actually does mention you know, like he's had 30 degree weather, compared to 40 degree sun. Yes. Um, and that is something that we are... All too familiar here within Australia, and one might consider is a bit more analogous to uh, the Middle East. It is. Uh, it is. And I could even, I would even hazard to guess that it probably even gets hotter in the Middle East. It, it, and it does. So the humidity is different, but we can um, get up to 40 and a little beyond 40. Like I've trained as it's getting closer to 40, but once mm. it hits 40, your your training Hottest changes. Hottest day I've ever experienced: 52 degrees. <sighs> I, Ooh, an I oven. It was an oven. Hottest day I've ever experienced. I think I tried to just keep inside and not look at the temperature. Yeah, I, I went outside. When you go outside, you're just like, oh, what? Um, and so in those conditions, and you've experienced, you f have said, I get an experience, mail can get so hot that you don't even want to touch you it. You don't want to touch it, yeah. So you'll be wearing your gambeson, which is a nice thick padded layer mm. between you and the metal. But if you accidentally lean across to grab a drink of water and the inside of your wrist or some soft part of your skin mm -hmm. touches the outside of that mail, you notice it. It's like uh, it's like touching a hot plate, basically. Not quite. Um, there's not the sizzle. It's not mm. that hot, but it's still hot enough to cause like an immediate reaction of pain. Well, this is the big problem with uh, the assumption then that you must wear cloth over the mail to keep it cool because mm. I feel that is probably an exceptional circumstance rather than the norm. And I wonder how uh, like debilitating it would be because if it was truly debilitating, there is a big gaping hole in the, uh, I guess, perceived idea that you wear a surcoat to prevent mail from overheating. And can you see what that gaping hole or exposed part is? Maybe the fact that you could then get stabbed. Well, everywhere. What about my sleeves? Classic oh, well, I suppose. I suppose. Don't have sleeves, and we have confirmation in art and other things like it, for crusaders in the Holy Land that their surcoats are not covering their sleeves. And if the mail is getting so hot and so detrimental to the point where you need to put cloth over top to prevent it from being debilitating, why are they leaving their sleeves exposed? That's true, but there is documentation that has been suggested mm. that the reason you see a lot of crusading knights with their helmets off or only wearing mm. a, a skull cap, a close helmet, is because they started to overheat and people started to die on campaign mm. on their horses. So they had to at least somewhat armor down. Matt actually mentions this because this is one of the interesting things. A helmet is more, it keep, you get hotter in a helmet because it's more enclosed, harder to ventilate, then mail is full of holes. It's a mesh. It will air out. Mm. And unless you are literally in the baking sun, uninterrupted for a good long time. Speaking for the, of the baking yeah, sun. <laughs> for the mail to get overheated. I reckon with 
with natural air kind of cooling and movement, especially if you can go in shade and out and there's a couple of breaks and everything, I don't see the male getting so hot to be detrimental to the point where you need to cover it up. And again, that's confirmed by the art and other sources where the sleeves aren't covered. That is, and I think that actually brings up a really good point because I've, like I said, I've fought in, in male in the baking heat, well, at least the Australian baking mm. heat, um, and you'll get hot after, after a few fights. You'll take off your helmet, you'll have a drink of water, but you don't kit completely down. You mm -hmm. might even open up the front of your gambeson yeah. if you can, a little, little bit of air in, but taking that, that off or like trying to yeah. put something white over the top, even though colour theory does state like white should reflect a lot, but at well, the same time, Time, black would absorb a lot of light so well, the, uh, the thing is we have knights in the crusades wearing black yes. like the knight, knight's hospital and so if color was such an important factor to reflect the sun no one would be wearing dark colors and we do have evidence of wearing dark circles yes you do and in the middle east at the time you had a lot of people wearing like black everything at the same yes. time so like color theory is a thing it does actually reflect more light but mm. is it substantial enough that that at the time, before we sort of went, oh, it does change the degree a little bit, mm -hmm. that people would really bother about it, and probably not. Yeah, and I think a good acknowledgement in this discussion is air cooling is absolutely a thing, Yes. Right? And uh, male, like, is great at air cooling, because the air goes through. I'm only wearing a thin bit of um, cloth underneath here, mm -hmm. which is, uh, that's just to avoid pinching on the skin. You, uh, you don't actually need padding underneath to prevent chafing and itching or anything. No, but I think if you're not wearing some type of layer underneath, yeah, yeah, yeah. then and, and the male gets hot, it's gonna it's gonna scald. And actually, there are instances of people who have a um, little bit different, but they have uh, had hot male put it on and ends up with grill marks oh, on really? them. Yeah. So um, it can get hot. It can get really hot. But air cooling would actually help keep that lower. I feel like because the air just runs through and I think it would be more exceptional for the male to get so hot where it gets to that level mm. like where it's truly baking because if you're moving and you're keeping around that will actually help keep the male cool in my opinion so I do think male can get we have direct evidence of metal getting particularly hot in the baking sun but it's obviously not so detrimental to the point where they had to cover the male fully because look the sleeve the, the sleeves is the biggest biggest point I think so now this does then raise a very pertinent question, which is really the topic of this video then, why did knights wear surcoats? And Matt kind of ends off on this as an interesting speculation, and he opens up for question, or, or sorry, possible answers uh, to hear thoughts, and I definitely have my own thoughts, that, oh, one big one. The main reason why I think knights absolutely wore surcoats, if it wasn't such for a practical utilitarian reason, because this is the thing, right? If knights were only wearing surcoats to uh, keep the male cool in hot weather, why were they wearing surcoats in cooler weather when it was unneeded? Which they absolutely did. Again, or thicker yeah, surcoats Well, that's well. the other thing. There are thick and thin surcoats. I'm wearing a padded, thicker surcoat, right? But you're wearing a much thinner one, a nice kind of but this is still, But this is still double-layered linen yeah, and is, calico, it so it's, it's yeah. still thick enough. But not, not as thick as like a padded. No, that's, that's a, almost... Well, that is a gambeson. Yeah, it is. So. It's, a, it's a, a gambeson surcoat, effectively. And so... That's another interesting point because if you're trying to keep cool, something like this, even like additional layers would actually keep hot and prevent the ventilation effect that you get from male. Mm. And so if you're keeping it on to keep cool, and that's another why layer of you? insulation. <laughs> I think I think you were getting at definitely the, the point, which is why were they wearing mm. colours and, and uh, heraldry and that's, symbolism? You you said the word, that's the answer. I the primary reason I feel knights wore not only surcoats, but other types of cloth over their armor was heraldry. Mm. And see, so we see it with jupons, we see it with tabards, okay? We see it with lots of coats that went over armor. And what do you see? Colors, sigils, devices. I identifying liver livery yeah. is basically what it is. So you will have, for example, you'll see people walking around with blue and black quartered Mm -hmm. you'll know they're your guys. Yeah. You see someone, for example, walking around with a red cross on a white, and you, they might be the enemy. So all of a sudden you know now who to attack. Because identifying people on the battlefield was an issue. And we even see the form of, they call it kind of proto-heraldry on Viking era shields. Yes. And so heraldry on shields was one way to do it. And uh, I kind of, I made this shield before I settled on my colours, um, and black and blue is actually my colours. It's a little, it's a little dusty. We it's need, a little to, dusty. It's need to get back to but, this. But um, if this was black, like, I would have my colours on my shield and my surcoat, and that 
provides a crucial role in identifying friend from foe on the battlefield. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. And so, yeah, that would be my the main takeaway. Heraldry is the main reason why they wore surcoats. Uh, they also look great. <laughs> They really do, like done properly and having them sort of cut in. I'm not sure what this one looks like. I didn't quite look in the mirror. <laughs> so I'm hoping I don't look like a, um, look a, a little tubby. Maybe I do, but it, it just, I think it cuts in at the waist, it sort of broadens out the shoulder. It's, I feel like it's better than wearing just male if you can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so great video, Matt. I really love that you brought up, because like I said, it's always kind of pit me. It's like that, the, th the hanging question in the air, whenever I heard someone, oh, it's protect the armor for he's like, what about the sleeves then? Mm. <laughs> and so I love pointing out little odd inaccuracies that get repeated again and again. And then of course, love adding our additional thoughts. Thank you for watching. Hope you stick around. We actually have a recent video where we've been talking about falchions a lot. And we have. I get to show you off a two-handed falchion. Yes. They're, they're rare, they do appear in art. They do, in the, in, uh, the Morgan Bible, the Majowski yeah. Bible. Yeah. Um, they are some really nice oh, ones it's, too. It's really, really cool. It's a great video. I hope you check it out. There's a link right here. And look, I'm being a bit trolly comparing it to the katana, but it's more of a, a presentation of the two-handed falchion. It is, but there is some val validity in that mm. comparison. So, but you know, to actually figure out what was said, you'll have to check out the video. Yeah, just uh, it's right there. I hope you click on it. It's, I don't think it gets the love it needs. It's a fun video. Yeah. Uh, have you clicked on it? It's pretty good. I hope they have. Yeah, I hope they have. Well, if not, you can still. Yeah. We'll see you over there.